So it's safe to say Tesla had a pretty rough day today. And it was not just Tesla, it was basically all of your big tech. You even did have the Russell that did poorly as well. And the Russell has been on fire lately. Now we'll briefly go over the reason for this sharp decline today, specifically in semiconductor companies. But on that note, we have TSMC that reports earnings tomorrow as well as Netflix, and that will drive the next move for our markets for better or for worse. Higher or lower. And this will also impact Tesla stock. Now here in this video, we will also take a look at the technicals for Tesla, where we currently are. If things look good, if things don't look good, I'll give you my insights. And we will also take a look at the option activity and the positioning in Tesla stock today. Not to mention, we will take a look at what big money is saying about our markets following this decline, which in fact was the worst day for the NASDAQ since 2022. But first, before we do that, we're going to have a drink. The Tesla tequila is finally here. Been waiting for about two months for this moment. And it's kind of hard to see. I'm not sure if you guys will be able to see it. It, it says Tesla, Mezcal, basically everything it says on the bottle right here on the box with the Tesla symbol. And the box kind of reminds you of like an iPhone box to some extent, like very sturdy. You could, you know, put something in here or, or whatnot. But go ahead and open it up. This is where the good stuff starts. Boom. Box like that. Pretty uh, fancy looking. Got your little stand. And yes, we're going to try some of this too. But boom. Oh, it's backwards. Kind of like the last, you know, bottle and, and, and stand that we got from the last round of Tesla tequila back in, I believe that was 2021, but it's a nice foam so you can put it straight back in there, which, uh, which I do like because some people are going to drink it. Some people are not going to drink it. Some people are going to just leave it in the box and the bottle is like soft. It's almost like a soft, like suede almost like a soft rubber which uh which it's not rubber but it kind of feels like it so we're gonna go ahead and uh crack this open i'm just gonna twist it here all right let's see oh that's a cork did you guys hear that Ooh. okay so i don't really have like a shot glass or anything i, I i'm not a huge uh uh, liquor drinker. I, I just don't really drink liquor, so I guess I don't have any uh, shot glasses, but get a little pour on that. Oh, it's clear. Okay. It's fully clear. And I spilled some of it on me, so that's awesome. Okay, perfect. So you just push it back down in there. I thought it would screw, like twist in there. I guess you kind of just put it in there. It actually does take a little bit of strength to uh, get it in there, right? Perfect. Back on the stand she goes. And it's going to go up there, but I think I'm going to move the stand, so I'm just going to wait. Ooh. And it is kind of delicate for what it's worth. I think I might have it in there backwards. Yeah, I think that's the way it's supposed to go. Okay, let's see. Yeah, not a big liquor drinker. Uh, ugh. I'm not going to lie. It is very strong. Um, partially smooth. It's not as smooth as, as it would expect. It's, it's smoother than like in 1800 Lions Edition here, which I haven't opened that bottle and I've had it for almost a year now. But it's very sweet. It's kind of different. Like a sweet, I don't know, like like fruity almost. Maybe black licorice? I don't know. You could definitely taste the uh, agave. Agave? I don't really know how to say that word. Yeah. Very interesting. Let me know what you think about Tesla's new 
Tesla tequila if you have tried it and gotten yours down below in the comment section. But with that said, let's go over everything you need to know about Tesla stock, our markets, and even what to expect tomorrow. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, Tesla stock had a pretty rough day today, but in the grand scope of things, in the grand scope of what happened today to especially semiconductors, Tesla's about 3% decline really doesn't look that bad. It could have been a lot worse. Now, whether or not things get worse from here for Tesla, I think largely comes down to tomorrow. And I have good and bad news. What would you like first? Perhaps let's start with the bad news and what happened today that caused ASML to decline over 11% on their earnings and what happened with your geopolitics. So the bad news is these problems with the semiconductors may not go away for quite a long time. It was reported today that the Biden administration is considering using a wide sweeping rule to clamp down on companies exporting their critical chip making equipment to China, which is ASML to a T. ASML gets about 50 percent of their revenue from China alone. And that's one reason why ASML did decline by 11%. But ASML's earnings were kind of a mixed bag. They were less profitable this quarter than they were in the same quarter last year. They brought in less revenue this quarter than they did last year. Now, ASML sells big machines that take like 18 months to build. So they only sold like 50 of them last quarter. But I mean, they are hundreds of millions of dollars a piece. They are massive pieces of equipment. Nonetheless, the earnings were okay, not great, not bad, and the stock was priced for almost perfection. And that's kind of the same thing that's, you know, priced into Nvidia, Arm, and all of your other semiconductor names. Now, the other bit of bad news is this. Donald Trump said Taiwan should pay the US for defense in an interview with Bloomberg Businessweek published on Tuesday, and there were also um similar reports that that Trump would kind of follow the same Biden um policies on semiconductors in general. So it looks like no matter who is the president coming in 2025, you're you're gonna have more restrictions on gpus and where they can be sold to what companies and that's a longer term negative for the overall industry and it really just creates more uncertainty as well if trump is now the guy that is expected to win all of the polls you're looking at are pricing in a trump presidency the markets have been pricing in a trump presidency for a while and after the comments trump made last night um at the Republican National Convention, it's it's more uncertain what that policy framework would actually look like. Carl from CNBC shared this from Morgan Stanley's trading desk, quote, the Trump policy on semis semis is likely not that different from the Biden Biden administration, which has been aggressive on AI chip restrictions and Nvidia component shipments to Howie. I think I say that right. Howie. Howie looks like Hawaii, Howie, and domestic subsidies via the CHIPS Act. But the approach is quite different, as Biden has implemented restrictions via clearly communicated Department of Commerce guidelines versus Trump's loser approach, which creates more uncertainty, unpredictability, and volatility for semi-stocks, even if the policies are similar. Oh, I read that wrong. It's looser policy approach, not loser policy approach. But basically what they're saying is Biden and the current administration has been long in advance kind of televising to the markets what they plan to do as far as these GPU restrictions. Trump, on the other hand, may just come out one blue sunny afternoon and say, yeah, you're no longer allowed to sell those components to that country or company. And that does in and of itself create more uncertainty. And trust me, the markets can handle bad news, but what? They can't handle uncertainty. I say this all the time, and it's very relevant, especially on a day like today. All of this was the bad news. Are you ready for the good news? The good news is pretty straightforward. Qualcomm is down 8.3%. Marvell is down almost 10%. Arm is down 9%. NVIDIA is down almost 7% today. ASML is down 11%. Why is this good news? Well, heading into earnings, 
you've already started to lower the bar. So as I've been concerned about earnings because these stocks are trading at all-time highs or near all-time highs, they're not anymore. Now they just got a 5 to 10% discount before those earnings. That in and of itself is a positive for broader markets when you actually start to get these earnings, one of which is from TSMC. So instead of trotting into tomorrow morning's earnings with TSMC thinking everything's just fine and dandy and, you know, up in the air whether or not earnings are going to be good or bad or what kind of reaction we're going to see. Now, if the earnings are not as great, perhaps you've already priced in a lot of that from today. And that, I would say, is a little bit of good news going forward into tomorrow. Now, that doesn't mean we're all fine. That doesn't mean TSMC can report bad earnings and the stock will do fine or will do good. That's not what I'm saying. But as long as things are not terrible or okay, at least pretty good, I would expect limited downside. In other words, I'm not expecting another 10% down day if TSMC comes in line with estimates. Whereas yesterday, if this sell-off did not happen today, you probably would have got a 10% plus knee-jerk reaction on TSC, TSMC's earnings tomorrow with in-line expectations being met. Now, tomorrow morning, you will have, like I said, TSMC, Nokia, Cintas, Domino's, DR Horton, Abbott, the Blackstone Group, KeyBank, and a couple of others. And then tomorrow and after hours, you will also have Netflix, Intuitive Surgical, PPG, and some others. Netflix is also one of those companies that even though it has very little correlation to Microsoft or Tesla or Google or Amazon, it does have a lot of correlation when it comes down to earnings. Netflix tends to be one of the first big tech names to report. And even though Netflix has a totally different business model than any other big tech name, if Netflix has good or bad earnings, it does cause a large sympathy reaction to those other big tech stocks. And again, while I think expectations are still too high for TSMC and Netflix, they're not as high now as they were just yesterday. As I have also talked about, we have until the end of August for Biden to get the Democratic nomination or to actually step out of the race. This could be a potential gray swan event. It's something we all know that's possible that seems like a pretty low likelihood right now that could cause some pretty substantial selling in markets. The reason for this is because it would create more uncertainty. Um, if, you know, let's say Camila Harris were to step up, if she, if she would be president, what would her policy um, preference look like? We just don't know. To some extent, I think you're seeing less election volatility now because we already, well, we have Joe Biden in office now. We had Trump. What's really new? Not a lot. So I think to that point you might see more election volatility come out if biden did step down the reason i'm saying this is because this news just came out about 15 minutes ago biden says he will consider dropping out of the race if a medical condition was diagnosed by doctors and you're starting to see more signs of a potential step down coming including nancy Pelosi, that is apparently calling around to see who the replacement for Biden would be. And as I have reported in other videos, this is the biggest outperformance of small cap stocks over large cap stocks over a five day period in history with data starting in 1978. And as I have mentioned before, what's unusual about this is these large outperformances typically occur after a bear market, like right when you're coming out of one. You tend to see small caps really outperform the S&P literally almost every single time in history. That is what has happened. Now the S&P is at all-time highs, or was at all-time highs. This, at the same time, the Russell is massively outperforming. As I also reported in other videos, the short interest on the Russell, the S&P, the NASDAQ has all went down like 30% in the last couple of days, 20 to 30%, depending on what ETF or index you're looking at. And that just shows me there was likely a broad market short squeeze that just took place. Now, when you get short squeezes like that, momentum can be strong and they can last a while. But when you tend to see that short squeeze end, you tend to get more short positioning back into the markets. And 
don't be surprised if that could cause some downside, especially correlating with this earning season, something I have warned about a couple of times here on the channel, specifically with semiconductors that are taking it on the chin today, but with TSMC and Netflix, that's going to set the entire mood for all of your big tech earnings. It's like the court of law, innocent until proven guilty. When it comes to earnings, and especially the first couple, you know, big tech earnings, it's guilty until proven innocent. If Netflix and TSMC fall on earnings, the rest of the gang is going to be grouped in that same category as they're guilty. They're probably going to have bad earnings as well. Ryan Dietrich writes on X today marked 351 trading days without a 2% drop for the S&P 500, tying the longest streak since pre global financial crisis. So nonetheless, it has been a long time since we have really seen any kind of substantial volatility. Take a look at what Trump's vice president, J.D. Vance, just said about Elon Musk. This is actually incredible. Look, okay. Elon and I know each other a little bit, but yeah. Elon is actually a great example of an American entrepreneur who's yeah. built a company, but also a company that's employed a lot of good American workers. If you think about, you know, Elon Musk is in some ways a throwback to an older generation of American entrepreneur, he yeah. builds real things. He builds cars, he builds rockets. Okay. And that's, the, I think, the kind of, kind of economy that President Trump wants to create. Those are some very favorable words towards Elon and Tesla. Let me know what you think about that down below in the comment section. As Seth Golden writes, the S&P has made 38 all-time highs in 2024, has made 38 all-time highs in calendar years 12 times previously. Every single time the S&P has continued to make higher highs for the year. The top is not likely in just yet. And really the central thing that I'm paying attention to is the economy. As long as the economy continues to hold up, as long as we're looking ahead to the Fed that starts to cut rates, I think any kind of correction we do get will likely be met with new all-time highs again by the end of this year. Fed Waller said today the Fed is getting closer to the time when cutting the policy rate is warranted. Michael A. Gade, a CFA on X, says Trump is bearish for tech. Few understand this. I actually don't know of this individual, but he does have over 735 thousand followers on x now bank of america just came out with some very interesting research they say credit spreads say the stock rally is unsustainable flashing the biggest warning since the dot-com bubble and you can see low quality credit dispersion is the widest since 1999 through 2022 and anytime you get these credit spreads that start to widen especially on the low quality spreads that tends to be a sign of a crash coming in markets. But this is again one of those data points or historical references that we can look at and say markets should have already crashed by now. But yet stocks just continue to new all time highs. So I think we are truly in uncharted waters here. And that's why I do think every data point, every major earnings will be important for what happens to broader markets. Now, the interesting flow sentiment today over on Ortex, you have seen seven orders totaling $1.58 million in Tesla with a positive order value of 52%. The short position remains largely unchanged at 3.79% short interest of free float. $26.98 billion currently in short positions and 105.17 million shares that are currently sold short. And it looks like today you've seen about 800,000 shares that were actually sold short on net. And take a look at this. Elon Musk says Tesla should be viewed as real world AI company. FSD and Optimus will be the main revenue drivers. And I think this is very important. Very, very important because what I've said for many months now is right now the markets are all caught up in the GPU providers, the, the enablers of AI. They're not at all focused on the, the application of AI, the um, applicators of AI. It will change seemingly overnight. The markets will stop paying so much attention to GPU providers and start looking for companies that are actually providing real world AI with a path to grow that larger because this is kind of like the dot com bubble in the sense of there's a lot of companies promising things around AI but who's actually going to create something that is long lasting and fundamentally impactful the top contender there 
by far is Tesla. And when the markets do actually start to flip and start looking at these companies that are providing real world AI, that's when Tesla will actually see its Nvidia moment. And this is the precise moment when Tesla stock will explode. If we're not already at all time highs by this point, I would expect a run. <sighs> I mean, if, if as long as the economy is doing OK and there's no crash going on at that time, which I imagine there wouldn't be, Tesla stock could well run into the six, seven, eight hundreds, maybe as high as a thousand dollars upon um, this realization. I do think that will take place by the end of this year. The markets will start to look forward to who's actually applying this real world AI, especially if you start to see the semiconductors miss a little bit here and there. But. I think 2025 is going to be a solid year for that. And I would be surprised, very surprised, like outright shocked if it did not take place this year or by 2025. If we're heading into 2026 and the markets have still not come to this realization that, you know, it really matters who's deploying real world AI. And if the hype's not on those companies, yeah, I might as well just retire from YouTube because that would be unprecedented. So from that standpoint, we could be looking at a lot of upside for Tesla stock within the next six to 12 months. But in the near term, we are not in, in immune to any downside that we see in markets. We're just not. And you see that today with Tesla stock down about 4%. And the Nasdaq having a very rough day. Now, specifically, the level that you should only care about for Tesla is around 226, 227. As long as we stay above this long term downtrending trend line, that's great because Tesla really, really reacts around the technicals. So as long as you stay above that level, things are just fine. If you fall under that, unfortunately, the markets are probably going to be in a full on crash like event. Perhaps that's Biden stepping down. Perhaps that's something else happening. Who exactly knows? But that would not be a great sign if we did break under that line. And also the good news for Tesla is the more we see this selling consolidation heading into Tesla earnings next week, the more conditioned we are for a rally upon those earnings. Because I've said in the last couple of videos, if we don't get new products unveiled on Tesla's earnings, Tesla would probably fall. But I said that as Tesla was in the 250s, 260s, and briefly in the 270s. If if we fall down to like 230 heading into Tesla earnings, I would expect a very positive reaction even if we don't get new products unveiled. So what I'm actually explaining here is price dictates expectations. So anytime you look at a stock that's trading super low heading into earnings that has been selling off, you don't even have to know the actual earnings numbers or the expectations. You can just know that they're very low, right? And the odds of an upside surprise are higher. If a stock's at all-time highs heading into earnings, expectations are at all-time highs, and there's a greater chance of disappointment. Same goes for intermediate rallies between earnings or on shorter time frames like we have seen recently. Expectations have risen over the last couple of weeks. But they're starting to fall again as Tesla stock has been falling in the past couple of days. So let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section. Is this the start to a larger crash? Is Tesla going to crash as well? Is this just a simple correction? Are we going to buy the dip? coming tomorrow. Let me know what you think about this as well as the earnings coming out tomorrow morning with TSMC and then Netflix tomorrow in after hours. You guys have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.